Welcome to another edition of Daily Airline News, focusing on the search for MH370, and delighted to say, joined by my co-host, Richard Godfrey. Good morning, Richard, in Germany. Good afternoon to Perth, Australia, Geoffrey. Thank you. And I know we were going to talk to you about an MH370 missing aircraft checklist, um, but we've decided to do defer that until next week because we will have we want to have a deep dive into Ocean Infinity and the Armada ships because there's a few queries that we have uh, thought about and a couple of questions from viewers uh, that have raised a couple of question marks and Richard's done a deep dive uh, into Ocean Infinity and its Armada fleet and its search fleet in general. So, first of all, uh, Richard, uh, you broke the news yesterday that Amata 7806 is on the move again. Can you give us an update to kick this off? Sure. Amata 7806 is heading towards Port Louis in Mauritius and is expected to arrive in 13 days' time on the 21st of May. Uh, <clears throat> it seems to be in a bit of a hurry because... Uh, when it left Singapore, it was at top speed, about 11.6 knots. Um, the maximum economic speed is uh, around 10. And uh, the current speed is uh, normalized to just over 10 um, uh, knots. So we're showing you a screenshot. Um, it's currently uh, still... Uh, quite close to Singapore um, and it's got over 3,000 nautical miles to go. So why, in your view, is a Marta 7806 uh, going back to Port Louis and Mauritius? Well, hmm, that's a question. Uh, we'll, we'll see uh, for sure in 13 days' time. Um, but the last time, uh, the visit to Port Louis, Mauritius, was uh, on the 4th to the 8th of February um, in this year. And that was uh, initially for a refueling stop and, uh, and logistics uh, pr provisioning. Uh, but also, it was to meet up with Amada 7808, which came in from Cape Town. Um, we're showing a screenshot of the two ships uh, meeting up in uh, Mauritius. Mm. Then Amada 7806 left to go to the MH370 search area, but first spent five days north of Mauritius uh, testing underwater equipment. Uh, in relatively shallow waters. Meanwhile, Amada 7808, uh, which left for Cape Town, went to Las Palmas in the Canary Islands, then to Southampton in the UK, and then spent a month in Amsterdam uh, in the Netherlands. Uh, then it went to Brest uh, in France, and it's now off the northwest coast of Spain doing ROV sea trials, so uh, checking out uh, new equipment. Um, so it's a bit of a guesswork what Amada 7806 is up to. Well, perhaps it's heading the same way, Richard. Uh, that's quite uh, possible. Um, and if you take a look at the Amada fleet operations, uh, the focus is on oil, gas, and wind farm energy projects. Uh, and the geographical focus is quite clearly in the North and the South Atlantic Ocean, uh, less going on in the Pacific or in the Indian Ocean. And in particular, uh, Ocean Infinity are concentrating on areas like the North Sea, the Baltic Sea, and offshore uh, Guyana in uh, South America. So just going through the Amada fleet operations, and we're showing a screenshot of where they all are. The, the new ships, the Amada 8601 and 8602, um, 8601 is underway in the Atlantic, um, heading into Las Palmas in the Canary Islands. 
8602 is in Phung Tau, Vietnam, uh, where it is uh, still being built and finished off with equipment. Uh, it did some sea trials off the coast of Vietnam, and uh, I expect it will uh, be out and about uh, soon. 7801 is underway in the North Sea on an oil energy uh, project in the Breider Bick field. 7802 is currently in Southampton, but was in the North Sea on an oil gas energy project. 7803 is in the port in Eemshaven in the Netherlands, was also in the North Sea on an oil gas uh, energy project. 7804 is uh, in the Baltic Sea, um, firstly on an oil gas uh, wind energy survey uh, on, off uh, Poland, uh, the so-called Baltica II field, and it's now off Lithuania uh, in the Koronian Nor Offshore Wind Farm um, project. 7805 is in the North Sea, uh, off Norway, uh, 7806 we mentioned, 7807 is in Trinidad on the way to Guyana uh, for the Exxon Mobil um, oil gas project, and 7808 is in uh, underway in the Atlantic um, doing the ROV sea trials. So they're all over, but focusing on the Atlantic north and, and south. But Ocean Infinity has other ships apart from the Armada fleet, does it not? Yeah, it has two um, significantly larger ships. It owns uh, Island Pride, uh, that uh, has a gross uh, tonnage of uh, almost 7,000 tonnes uh, and a length of 87 metres, and that's currently... Uh, offshore Guyana in the Starbrook field on an oil uh, project for, for Exxon Mobil. Um, Ocean Infinity has a long-term lease on another ship called the Norman Frontier, which is even bigger, almost 9,000 tons uh, gross weight and 121 meters uh, long. And that's uh, currently busy offshore Norway in the IRPA field on a gas uh, project for Shell. And talking of larger ships, they used a much larger ship on their 2018 search, did they not? Yeah, Seabed Constructor is the ship. It's now called Orient Constructor, and it's now based out of Taiwan and owned by Dong Feng Offshore. Um, that had a gross weight of almost 8,000 tonnes and was 115 metres long, which is uh, uh, much more suitable for the sea conditions in the southern Indian Ocean. Uh, and it's uh, currently busy on a, another oil gas energy project uh, offshore from Taiwan. So for the viewers, uh, how does the amount of fleet compare in size? What are we looking at? Uh, the Amada 78 class uh, has a gross weight of 2,373 tonnes and is 78 metres long. That's why it's called the uh, Amada 78 class. Amada 86, uh, gross weight a bit bigger, 2,583 tonnes and 86 uh, metres uh, long. So both ships are on the small side of the scale when compared with uh, Seabed Constructor or Island Pride or Norman uh, Frontier. And uh, they do appear a little bit lightweight for the southern Indian Ocean with, when compared with other ships that are going uh, uh, through the Indian Ocean. Um, I'm not a maritime expert, um, but uh, I have sailed yachts through the Indian Ocean. Um, but, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, they look a little lightweight to me. Well, they looked very lightweight to me when I first saw um, Amada 7806 coming over the horizon. 
And uh, I just dismissed it. I thought that can't be it. Um, but as I got a bit closer, um, it sort of, I thought, wow, it has to be it. And then when I went down to Henderson uh, Shipyard, I thought, oh, well, I can position myself north of the shipyard or south of the shipyard and get photographs because you couldn't get in. But I couldn't because I couldn't find it, couldn't see it because it, it just <laughs> got hidden by other things like cranes and whatnot. And you simply could not see it positioned at Henderson. I knew exactly where it was, but I couldn't see it from either the usual two vantage points because it was so small. And I thought to myself, I wouldn't want to go to see in that thing. Um, you know, it's, uh, I mean, the, the issue is to, for the viewers is, is that this ship's got to launch and recover a, AUVs and, uh, the, those Southern Indian Ocean swells are massive. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I, I, I wouldn't want to be on board. So what's yeah, well, the Ocean Infinity it, it, business model then? That, well, that's a good question. Um, uh, they invested heavily in the Amada fleet and their goal is to um, create innovative robotic technology and transform operations at sea and uh, thereby helping us all and the planet uh, to thrive, uh, particularly, for example, on the energy uh, that we uh, demand uh, more and more of. So the key is the Armada fleet, which is planned for unmanned operations. But as you say, at the moment, they still are lean crew uh, operated. Mm -hmm. And they uh, are also planned for completely green uh, fuels. So they are they, uh, their facilities, Ocean Infinity, are already carbon neutral. Their operations at sea will be carbon neutral, they say, by 2027. And the rest of the business will be carbon neutral latest by 2040. So they are moving in what they term a uh, circular, sustainable uh, economy. So autonomous operations uh, and uh, transforming their approach to consumption and waste management. So really adopting the principles of a circular uh, economy, recycling, waste reduction, responsible purchasing. It all sounds wonderful, but how do they earn money? Yeah, well, that that's the key. The business focus is on oil, gas and wind energy projects. Um, as we mentioned in the North Sea, the Baltic Sea and uh, offshore Guyana. Uh, the customers are people like Shell, where they have a global agreement, Exxon Mobil, uh, the Guyana project, uh, Petrobras from Brazil, uh, NOAA, uh, the U.S. Uh, agency, Equinor in the U.S. with a wind farm offshore from California, um, uh, the RWE energy giant from Germany in the North Sea, uh, the Norwegian uh, Petroleum uh, Department, which is uh, uh, in various uh, projects offshore from Norway, uh, and other companies like Ørsted in Denmark and PGE in Poland and Ignitus Renewables in Lithuania. So they have a, a, a whole range of, of customers and a whole range of locations where they're operating. Uh, fewer customers in the Asia Pacific uh, region. We recently mentioned the Philippine and the Taiwan offshore surveys. Uh, fewer customers in the Pacific, uh, the Morro Bay wind farm offshore from California. Um, and some projects in the U.S. Atlantic, for example, the Outer Banks Wind Farm project, uh, but the concentration is much more on the North Sea and the Baltic Sea at the moment. Mm. So where does all that leave MH370? Yeah, well, that is the big question. 
um, and quite clearly, Ocean Infinity are very busy and uh, have got a lot to do. Um, so it would be great to have some public statement from Ocean Infinity on MH370. They haven't mentioned MH370 in any statements uh, so far in, in 2025. Uh, they appear to have gone quiet on the subject. Mm. And um, they obviously believe there is nothing to report. But on the other hand, uh, the expectation out there is that uh, come November, uh, they're going to be back in the search area. Maybe they won't be back with one of the Armada ships. They may be back with one of the bigger ships. Uh, yeah, that would be... Uh, I think uh, uh, an interesting uh, option, um, mm. but it'd be lovely to hear what their plans are, um, and uh, and have some sort of confirmation of a future uh, search for MH370. And we should uh, also remind viewers that the Malaysian government have said um, that Ocean Infinity have signed uh, the contract, which had sat. I think on the Attorney General's table for uh, what ten or twelve weeks. Um, it was issued in November, uh, December, and and uh, they made an announcement uh, as last last month that uh, Ocean Infinity had signed it and the Malaysians had signed it, but there's been nothing from Ocean Infinity whatsoever. Um, and they did indicate that they would say something when everything was in place, but they haven't done so. Yeah. So it's a bit of a mystery, that one, isn't it? It is indeed. Yeah, yeah. So, viewers, um, uh, thank you for tuning in. That's all we've got for you, time for you to... Sorry. So, viewers, thank you for tuning in. That's all we've got time for today, this analysis of Ocean Infinity and their fleet and what it's doing and what it, what it may do. Richard, thank you very much for all that research. It's absolutely fascinating. It's uh, quite a quite a story. And uh, tomorrow we're going to discuss your questions on this subject, uh, debris and MH370 on in general. And we expect and hope to have a three-way conversation tomorrow with uh, including Blaine Gibson um, uh, joining us. So there'll be three of us tomorrow with a bit of luck. So thank you again, Richard. You're very welcome. And, and viewers, please tune in tomorrow. Thank you.